Your Eminence, Archbishop Elpidophoros, clergy, members, and guests. Welcome all to our 32nd Annual Leadership 100 Conference. We have entered a new year with confidence as evidenced by the record attendance in this conference. Leadership 100 has grown stronger in the face of challenges in this past year, remaining, financial, remaining financially stable and increasing in membership. Our conference speakers will address the Archdiocese National Ministries, Academia, Business, Technology, Communications, and the Arts. The details of the program are in your conference brochure. This morning, we open our program with two speakers on a subject of primary importance to Leadership 100 and the recipient of many of our grants, the Inter-Orthodox Ecumenical and Interfaith Relations, which was central to the ministry of our founder, Archbishop Iakovos, who served for nine years as president of the World Council of Churches, established dialogues with other faiths, and founded the predecessor organization that became the Assembly of Canonical Orthodox Bishops of the United States. And now I would like to introduce to you Deacon Nicholas Anton. I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate Deacon Nicholas Anton, who was ordained this past week by Archbishop Elpidophoros. Axios. And now let me continue uh, with the introduction of Deacon Anton. He's known to many of us for his long service to the Archdiocese. He preceded Father Kazarian, who we'll talk uh, in a little bit, as ecumenical officer and director of the Department of Inter-Orthodox Ecumenical and Interfaith Relations, and now serves as director of operations for the Assembly of Canonical Orthodox Bishops of the United States. Please read the impressive, his impressive biography in the, in the book in the program book. He served as coordinator of the United Nations programs for the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese from 2014 to 2018 and was secretary of the Ecumenical Patriarchate's 2018 Green Attica Symposium. He continues to serve as a special advisor to the Archdiocese on inter-Orthodox and social issues. With great pleasure, I present to you Deacon Nicholas Anton. Your Eminence, Reverend Clergy, Mr. Chairman, Ms. Paulette Poulos, and uh, members of Leadership 100 and special guests. Um, I must admit, it's a quite intimidating to be the opening act to the eloquent Father Nicholas Kazarian and the great Carl Hollister. It must be part of the new Deacon Hazing protocols. <laughs> but in all seriousness, allow me to start with a short video. The Assembly of Canonical Orthodox Bishops of the United States of America is the official church forum and premier agent for safeguarding and advancing Orthodox Christian unity in the United States of America. Its bishops, coming from many and diverse jurisdictions, discuss matters of common concern such as pastoral policies, social challenges, liturgical practices, governance issues, theological education, and canonical order. At the same time, they are committed to developing pan-Orthodox ministries so that, together, all Orthodox churches and Christians can witness Christ's love in the world. In all of its services and ministries, the fundamental goal of the Assembly of Bishops is to respond to Christ's command that we love our neighbor and, especially, the least of our brothers and sisters as a united Orthodox Christian community. For example, the mental health ministries connect devout faithful with professional practitioners, while also offering Peace of Mind, a unique training program for clergy and ministry leaders. Support and guidance for inter-parish associations open doors for clergy and laity to shape pan-Orthodox efforts within and across their local communities. Other assembly agencies range from youth programs, college campus ministries, 
and even volunteerism, to prison ministry, international humanitarian relief efforts, and evangelical outreach. You can easily access all of this information and even personally share your concerns with your bishops through the Assembly of Bishops website and mobile app. Visit assemblyofbishops.org to learn more about the Assembly of Bishops and support its ministries. Imagine a world where we can embrace our Greek, Arabic, Serbian, Romanian, Ukrainian, Russian, Bulgarian, Georgian, Albanian, and American culture while simultaneously prioritizing our faith. Imagine a venue where collaboration triumphs over competition, and imagine, not today or tomorrow, but perhaps one day, one Orthodox Church in this country. You just heard a brief overview of how the Assembly of Bishops is transforming this vision into a reality. I will not bore you with the details of how the Assembly of Bishops is the successor of SCOBA, or how the first 10 years were really focused on dialogue. Rather, I will briefly touch upon our approach, highlight some of our programs, and close with a glimpse into the future. The Assembly of Bishops structure is twofold. On the one hand, the bishops engage in dialogue, bringing their similarities and differences to the table to overcome obstacles to Orthodox Christian unity. In this process, they work on agreements around pastoral practices and, when appropriate, discuss canonical regional planning, that is, the mapping of what one church would look like geographically. I know this prong is quite the snoozer, but it really is important. On the other hand, and this is where things get exciting, the hierarchs focus on common ministries. Within this second focus, the assembly is both creator and coordinator. Because humanity is complicated, the actual nuances are a bit more complex, but let's leave it at this level for the purposes of this presentation. As creator, the assembly of bishops identifies ministry areas that are non-existent or highly anemic on the jurisdictional level, then builds that ministry from scratch. We gather the foremost Orthodox scholars and experts into a working group, come up with a proposal, beg for C money from fine folks like yourselves, and voila, two or three years later, a ministry is born. More on that later. As coordinator, the Assembly of Bishops identifies ministry areas that do exist and are even robust on the jurisdictional level, and works to facilitate the cross-pollination and sharing of resources between various jurisdictions. Forgive my French, but how stupid, wasteful, and irresponsible it is to create new and or double efforts within our ethnic conclaves when, really, we are all part of the one body of Christ. After all, one of the first lessons even children learn is that sharing is caring. At this point, I'll shift into our programmatic efforts and make our approach that make our approach thrive. First, the agencies of the Assembly of Bishops. The agencies, that is, International Orthodox Christian Charities, Orthodox Christian Mission Center, Orthodox Christian Fellowship, Orthodox Christian Prison Ministry, Orthodox Youth Ministries, and Orthodox Volunteer Corps, do the work of the Assembly in the world. They are witnesses to Orthodox Christian unity. While they are independent 501c3 organizations, the Assembly is their sole corporate member and they are part and parcel to how the Assembly carries out its mission. The Assembly of Bishops itself has a number of direct ministries. For the sake of time, I will highlight one particular ministry that was made possible by your generosity, our mental health ministries. The Assembly of Bishops Mental Health Ministries is dedicated to identifying and responding to the mental health needs of Orthodox Christians across the United States of America. As a result of surveying over 1,600 faithful through a mental health needs assessment, our current work includes a directory of over 100 Orthodox mental health and substance use professionals, a digital resource library, and a crisis response training program for clergy and ministry leaders entitled Peace of Mind. Learn more about our ministry at assemblyofbishops.org forward slash mental health.
this ministry is an example of where the Assembly of Bishops identified an area of need, unexplored by any jurisdiction, and responded in a practical and useful way. We know that people are using the Directory of Orthodox Christian Mental Health Professionals daily. We know that parishes and local communities are benefiting from their clergy and laity being trained in mental health first aid through peace of mind. And we know that the curriculum series we anticipate publishing within the next 12 months will help inform tens of thousands of faithful across the country. You, the members of Leadership 100, have made a huge difference in people's lives through your investment in this program. Also through your generous support, we expanded our communications and marketing efforts. We now have an active following on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. If you aren't already, please do follow us by searching our handle on the screen. Whereas in 2019 our reach was just a few people a day, with no feedback or interaction, we now reach thousands of interested individuals every single day who engage on our posts. Additionally, we launched a new series entitled Wisdom on Wheels, where our bishops have the opportunity to share their personalities with the faithful. This media initiative builds a sense of relationship which leads to greater engagement. What's your biggest fear? I think my, my fear is the absence of love. Some people are afraid of spiders. Some people are afraid of, you're, the, you're afraid of the absence of love. Yes. <laughs> wow. You went from saving bodies to saving souls. Yes, uh, that's one way of looking at it. The other way is I spent 20 years studying the physical aspects of the heart and now I'm spending time with the spiritual aspects of the heart. And so uh, when you go to confession, I actually know what part of the heart that sin is hiding behind, mm -hmm. like come out from behind that left papillary muscle <laughs> uh, because I can see you there. Um, no, I, I know you like to cook. That's what I've heard. And I so don't like to cook. I like oh, to okay. eat. You like to eat? Okay. I like to eat. Okay. And so because I like to eat, I can do some cooking. So people are impressed. They're not so impressed that I cook. They're so impressed that a bishop can cook. I think we're pretty much done. We, is there anything else we should do? Oh, you mean that's it? Do you want to tell them more? Of course, more later. <laughs> As His Grace said, we want to do more, and we're going to continue to do more. So on the horizon, after a successful pilot year, we are launching our Inter-Parish Association initiative nationally. In short, Inter-Parish Associations, composed of as few as two or three local parishes from different jurisdictions, gather for cross-cultural fellowship and to jointly engage in their local communities. Their purpose is to overcome internal barriers between jurisdictions while simultaneously increasing the Orthodox Church's overall uh, relevance in society. The ultimate goal is the growth of the Orthodox Christian Church through common witness in Christ. Additionally, we will conduct research through our mobile app in order to be better informed. And we will expand the features of the mobile app in order for it to be more relevant in your lives. You can download it through the Google Play or Apple App Store. Finally, we are also exploring new areas of collaboration, including in the area of marriage, family, and parenting ministries. Since I absolutely abhor when people drone on, as I realize I already have, I will stop my presentation here. I will be around for the entirety of the conference, and if you would like to dive deeper into any of the topics or ministries I've mentioned, please pull me aside so we can chat. Finally, I must say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I truly cannot express the depth of my gratitude for the support Leadership 100 has extended to the Assembly of Bishops, its ministries, and its programs throughout the years. None of this would be possible without your support. We have all achieved this together.